Now, if you're looking for a very quick and easy way of setting up an e-commerce site and hosting, you may want to check out the Cloudless option for the e-commerce starter bundle. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set things up, how to get up and running, and how easy it all is. Now, first of all, let me just quickly say this video is sponsored by Cloudways, but as always, I'm not giving you any opinions. I'm simply going to show you how it all works, then you can make an informed decision for yourself. Okay, so let's head over. Links are in the description so you can follow along exactly with what I'm going to do. So once you come onto the site, we're going to go ahead and click on the Launch My Online Store. Once you do that, you can either sign up or log in if you already have an account. If not, just click the sign up option, fill your details in, and you are going to be ready to go. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in a new server. So we're going to click to add a server. And this then gives us the option to select the application, the server details, the location, and some really useful things. So first of all, let's go ahead and set the application details up. Now, when it comes to Cloudways, all an application is, is what software you want to install. So for example, WordPress, e-commerce with WooCommerce and so on, any other kinds of things. So first of all, let's go ahead, make sure we've selected the e-commerce starter bundle. We'll give this a name. We're going to give the name to the server. So we're going to call this e-commerce server, but you can call that whatever you want. And then if we want to, if you already have an account, we can create a project. And a project is just a way of grouping things together. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to choose the server type. Now you can see we have five different types and each one of these will have different variations on the server size, the server options, and all those kinds of things, and also the pricing that you'll pay. So you can see we've got Digital Ocean. We've got a range of options then for premium servers and also server sizes. So for example, the amount of RAM you want to associate with it and so on. If you go over to something like Vulture, you can see we've got, again, slightly different options, but the, the way you work with it is exactly the same. Linode is pretty much the same. AWS, or if you want to go for Google Cloud Platform, you can choose that. And you can see we have a range of different types of server options inside there. Changing any of these values, if you take a look at the bottom, you can see we've got the pay-as-you-go pricing and the monthly pricing. So as we wrap this up, you'll see the prices will change. For this example, we're going to go with DigitalOcean. We're going to set this to be four gigabytes of RAM because we want to make sure we've got some overhead for an e-commerce store, but you choose whatever you want. If you're testing things out, maybe use a lower plan to start off with until you're ready to launch, and then you can ramp things up if you need to. We'll set this to four gig with the premium option, which is what you can see here, and it tells us now we hover over exactly what we're going to get. Four gigabytes of RAM, 80 gigabyte of NVMe storage, four terabytes of transfer per month, and a two-core processor. If you need more, you can ramp up. If you need less, you can ramp down. Okay, so we've got the server location. As you can see, there's a range inside here. I'm based in London, and this is where my virtual or test store is going to be located, so I'm going to choose that, but you choose whatever's closest to your audience or your potential market. We'll choose London. Once we've done that, now we basically put everything we need to get started. So what I'm going to do is click on Launch Now. That's going to take a few minutes to go through the process of launching and setting up my server and installing WooCommerce, WordPress, and everything else that needs to go with it, which we have a theme installed, several different plugins, and we've got a basic starter site all ready to go. So we have everything we need to hit the ground running. You can use it as is, or you can totally customize it to your heart's content. So let's let the server set up, and then we'll take a look. So that's it. Our server is now set up alongside our e-commerce application and the whole starter setup. So if we switch over to applications, you can see there's my e-commerce, the one we've just created. So let's click to open that up. And this will now give us all the information about the actual application itself. If we want to go ahead and log in, we can do that. And if we want to take a look at the front end of the site, we can do that as well. So let's do that. Let's open that up and take a look at the actual design we have. So as you can see, we've got a pretty nice looking starter site. Everything is set up, laid out for us. Very, very nice to look at. We can go ahead, click and take a look at any of the pages and test everything out. And we'll do a couple of speed tests in a moment just to show exactly what's going on behind the scenes and to see how optimized everything is for your e-commerce store. But first of all, let's go ahead and log into the dashboard of this site and take a look at what plugins, theme and everything else has been installed automatically for us. To do that, we can use the admin panel link and we can also go ahead and use the email address and password. But obviously you can change those and I would recommend it for security purposes. Let's go ahead and just log in. So once we've logged in, let's go ahead and go jump into the plugin section and install plugins. 
So as you can see, we're using Bloxy as the theme in this example. We've got Bot Protection and Breeze, which is a optimization tool that allows us to cache our site and speed everything up, alongside some other WooCommerce related features. So everything you need to get up and running in double quick time. So now taking a look at what's installed and how easy to get the server set up all configured, let's go ahead and take a look at how fast everything is. So we're going to be using GT Metrics for our first test. I've already logged in and just configured everything. So what I need to do is simply go ahead, drop the URL for our site in, hit analyze and let that go off and run the tests on it. And then we'll take a look at the results. So there's our results back, and as you can see, straight out of the gate, we've got a pretty solid starting point, especially for an e-commerce store. Next up, we're going to use Google PageSpeed Insight to get a good idea of what Google will see our website like on both a desktop and on a mobile device. So again, let's run the same test. We'll drop the URL in, and we'll click on Analyze, and let PageSpeed Insights go ahead and do all its ranking and testing. And there we go, there's our mobile score, we're just under 90. Jumping over to desktop, you can see we are almost 100 there. So that's again, looking pretty good. Now, before we move on and take a look at how else we can optimize and speed things up by adding a CDN or content delivery network, Let's take a quick look at the waterfall. Now, if you've never used the waterfall inside GT Metrics, it's a great way of seeing exactly what's happening behind the scenes. Each thing will load in incrementally. So as you can see, if we take a look in the same way as a waterfall, everything is flowing down. So we can see everything that loads in and how long each of those things actually take to load in. So if we find anything is causing a bottleneck, we can identify it using this option and then we can refine it to solve any issues we have. It's a great way of working out exactly what's loading when, and like I say, anything that might be slowing your site down, you kind of find it inside here. Now, when it comes to websites, especially e-commerce sites, speed is important, vitally important. And this is where you may want to take a look at using Cloudflare as an option, which is a CDN and a lot more. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at how you can set this up on your website. All you need to do is come to the application that you want. You can see Cloudflare is an option on the left-hand side. We can select that. This will show us all the different features we have as part of it. We need to drop in the URL we're going to be using for this example. We'll click on Enable. Now, bear in mind, this is a paid service. So if you want to check out the pricing, you can click on the link underneath to go ahead and show you the pricing and what's included. So as you can see, if it's only a single domain at the time of recording this video, it's $4.99 per month. However, if you have multiple sites using this, the price does drop down accordingly. So check that out to make sure that you know exactly what you're going to be paying when you sign up for it. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and just click on Enable. So this can take a few moments to go ahead and set up. So we're going to let that run and we're going to come back and take a look once that's finished. So once we've enabled that, we now need to do a little bit of work to connect this up and verify our domain. So for me, I'm going to be using Namecheap for this particular setup. You may have to take a look at a different way of working, but we're going to simply go ahead and add in these TXT records. By logging into my Namecheap account, I can manage my domains inside here and I'm going to come into the advanced DNS option. And from here, you can see I can go ahead and I can add in any kind of DNS information. So all we need to do is go ahead and do just that. So when I come down to add a new record, we're going to do a search for TXT record. We'll select that from there. You can see now we've got host and we've got value and we've got the TTL. Now the TTL we can leave to automatic. We're going to set the host and the value. So first of all, our first TXT record, let's copy that, which is our name stroke host. So we'll copy that from there, head back over into Namecheap. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop in our host. So we'll just paste that inside there and head back over and copy the value. So we'll click to copy that value, drop that in the value section and just click on the tick. We'll now go ahead and repeat that process for the second TXT record. Click the check again. And we've now added those records. So let's head back over now into Cloudflare. We'll click on next. And now that's going to go ahead and check that all those values are totally correct and then make sure that everything is verified and up and running. So you see, once we click on next, this now tells us this is pending verification. So we'll come back once that's finished and we'll just check things out. Now the domain ownership has been confirmed. We've got a couple more things we need to do before we're live on the actual Cloudflare servers. So if we click on the view a records, so inside there, you can see we now have the information on how to point our domain to Cloudflare. So we're going to log back into Namecheap and we're going to update the information for our domain to make sure it's pointing to the correct servers on Cloudflare. So over on Namecheap, we're going to go ahead and update our a record. So we're going to update the IP on there. 
we'll paste the value in and we'll click a little check to confirm that. So we're going to go ahead and add another record in. So add an A record. Our host is again using the at symbol and finally we're going to pop in the IP address. So let's copy the second IP address. Let's go ahead, pop that inside there, click the check mark, save our changes and let that go ahead and update. Now again, this can take a few moments to a couple of hours depending upon the registrar you're using. But once that's done, we should be pretty much good to go on Cloudflare. So what you can do is you can come back into your Cloudflare setup inside Cloudways and we can click the refresh and we can see if this is active. And as you can see, this is now active over on Cloudflare. Now, if like many users, you want to eke out every last drop of performance from the Cloudway servers, you may want to check out their Breeze plugin, which is a CDN and optimization kind of tool that's installed whenever you actually install any kind of application on Cloudways. To get access to that, you're simply going to come over to the settings section, and in there, you can see we have Breeze. Let's open that up. And this now has a lot of options. If you've ever used any other kind of tools for CDN, for caching, for optimizing websites, a lot of the settings inside you are going to be very, very familiar with you. So first up, under the basic options, you have your cache system. You can enable or disable things from here. And as you see, as you go through, you can enable various different settings. You can, if you want to, just use exactly as this comes out of the box so you don't change anything. But if you are someone that likes to tweak and get in there and just eke everything out, then you have a lot of options available. So you could come through and set up lazy loading. You've got things like if you want to enable or disable gzip compression. Hopping over into something like the file optimization panel, you can see we can enable minification for HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and so on. As with all these kinds of settings, they can have a big impact upon your site. So make sure you enable one at a time, save, then clear your cache, test your site to make sure everything works, and then move on to the next one. You can also choose things like preloading, so this will preload future pages in, which makes your site feel much snappier. And you've got advanced options where you can really get in and start to fine tune everything. One of the nice things inside you is you've got database options. So as your website grows, the data inside your database from things like drafts and things like that can start to mount up and also slow your website down. So you can use the database options inside here to clean all that out, or you can pick and choose what you clean or flush out from the system. You've also got a CDN options enabled. So if you want to activate a CDN, you can do that. You've also got Varnish, which is set up and installed as part of the server, which again is here to optimize the speed that your website will actually load at. So again, take your time, have a look at the options. You should have everything you need inside here to optimize the website over and above everything else we've seen in this video. And finally, you've got your FAQ. So if you're looking for an answer to a question, chances are you're going to find the information inside this section. And that's what I wanted to cover in this sponsored video from Cloudways. Hopefully this has shown you how easy it is to go about setting things up for e-commerce, how to set your server up and all the other things that come with it. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tutson. Until next time, take care.